said, quote, it was still a bit messy, but come on in. He asked to be blindfolded again, and Parashamti had detailed the events of the night. I want to bitch slap him back and forth so hard. Shortly after Haynes had left the kitchen, Parashamti had waited for Stacy to get drowsy from the sleeping pill and the alcohol and turned on, quote, St. John's Passion. Now, we're going to pause for a second. I need to play it for you because... I only found it on like two sources and I'm not sure if it if it's a for real thing, but it's a very pop and circumstance sort of sound. Okay. So I want to play it for you. So we're going to pause it so you understand where this is going. Oh, yay. How would you feel about St. John's Passion? That's creepy. Yeah. That's a really creepy, like murdering somebody isn't already creepy enough, but we had this discussion while it was playing. That is not a thing that, uh... I would feel great about hearing, especially knowing that it was like associated with a murder. So if I ever hear it again in the future, I'll probably be a little bit traumatized. <laughs> I don't know you would, though. It's not like someone's going to play it at a bar. So <laughs> You'd play it at a bar. I would, just for fun. <laughs> just to fuck with people. I do, I do that with Melanie all the time. If I heard Brand New Key at a bar, though, I'd be pretty jazzed yeah. about it. Yeah, me too. But it's also real funny to watch everyone like, what is this? It was that lesbian <laughs> with the moonlight hair. <laughs> Parashamti had stood behind Stacy and used a concrete paver to hit her in the back of the head during the song. When Stacy fell, she followed her through the house, continuously striking her with the concrete piece until it was reported to have broken in half. And this is a paver. That is hard. It's a paver. Like what my what I built my deck out of? Oh, so it's like a big rock, basically? Yeah. Oh. Big concrete rock. Oh uh-huh. man. Okay. So they're giving me they're giving me some heavenly creatures realness right now. That eh, was a brick <laughs> and a stocking. <laughs> Bricks are much easier to break than concrete. They're more porous, and a lot of times they have more flaws in them. I didn't learn that at masonry school. <laughs> <laughs> there are reports that the process took around forty-five minutes, and Stacy was still at that time holding on to life. So they followed her through the entirety of the house, hitting her several times with the concrete paver, and she's still alive after 45 minutes. So her death was agonizing. Correct. Yes. Stasinowski was frustrated at the lengthy death and had taken a dog chain that she used as a belt and started to strangle her. I knew it was going to go there. I knew it was going to go to strangulation. At the same time, Parashamti was still hitting her with the concrete piece. Sweet baby. It's horrible. The pair then started to clean the blood that had accumulated on the floor and the walls throughout the home. During this time, the women had shared a posh, or what apparently is well known in Australia as a French kiss over Stacy's lifeless body. There's a term for that? Mm-hmm. A it's French like a kiss snog. over, a, but like specifically over a dead body? No, oh, no. gotcha. No, gotcha. no. It's it's like a snog or like a, you know, you're making out with that person. Yeah. I just wasn't, I was like, so, but like it, it doesn't specifically have a corpse involved. Gotcha. No, no. Okay. Feel better about that now. During that same time, they recorded the scene on their cell phone. The video footage was reported to have audio of the two laughing, saying horrible things about Stacy and making fun of her English accent, eventually ending the two-minute recording with, quote, when I was beating the fuck out of her with a rock. And then peals of laughter in response. I'm not good at, like, making mine happy. (laughs) Well, it's murder, though. Is murder generally a happy topic when it like some time has passed and it's real far in the past it's like an easier pill to swallow Mm -hmm. and this is like 2006 and it's so brutal so it's like you can't there's no there's no humor with this there's nothing that we can do to it's so recent that they had a video recording on their cell phone yeah exactly Mm -hmm. Stacy's body was then dumped headlong into a wheeled trash bin and stored in the shed in the back of the house Days later, the women were planning the best way to get rid of the body, including a list of items and a shopping trip to Bunnings Hardware to price a chainsaw, lie, a shovel, and other items to aid in their scheme to get rid of the body. So they were going to dismember her? They thought they were, yes. Quote, there was something of a shopping list involving things like a chainsaw and line and spades in an effort to see what method could be done to dispose of the body. Now, lie, when you put that onto a dead body, is that, does that disintegrate or does it just get rid of the smell? No, actually, so the thing about lie on a regular basis, I just, weirdly, funnily enough, remember I told you about that terrible movie I watched where they're trying to get rid of the body and then they eventually yeah. find out that it's because you have to heat you have to heat the line. Yeah. The whole thing is a wash. Do people use it because they think it's going to dissolve the body or because they think it's going to get rid of the smell, though? I've, that's the thing I've never really been sure about. Okay, so uh, you know that lye is used in soap. Yes. Okay. 
Like, I know that you're a clean person. <laughs> Am I a clean person? <laughs> I mean, in, I'm a in dirty your body. Boy. Oh, <laughs> Ty. No, 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 no. No, but in all fairness, uh, soap's real important. Mm. <laughs> Use it. To my recollection, because of the caustic nature of lie, people think that it would dissolve a body because of the way that media has portrayed it in some ways. Okay. Logic says, boy, oh, Google it. And also just turn yourself into the police, you garbage person. Yeah. So now we're going to go to the court hearing. Great. Just going to make you mad. Oh, well, mm-hmm. I'm already mad, so the thing about the thing about Stacy, even though she was a runaway, she had been in contact with her parents, and they had basically buried the hatchet, yeah, and she was set to come home via a train. They were having a party supposedly as like going away because she was coming home the next day when her parents went to receive her at the train station and she didn't show Mm. up they panicked as you would your daughter is missing i don't care how old you are if if i told my parents i was going to be at a train station they had to pick me up she was so close to being home safe Mm -hmm. so obviously they start looking for her and they have missing persons report out they didn't really know where she was but the last known whereabouts obviously were at this house but cell phones were a thing at the time and she had one it sounds like i'm not sure Oh, okay. It has no report on that. The only cell phone that's mentioned is the one that they used to record. I wasn't sure, you know, because pings and everything. Yeah, no, totally. But also it's 2006. It's it's not like, it's not like now, you know, where you're like my roommate, he has a, he has a pin drop exactly where he's at at all times to his friends. And I was like, oh, that's weird. He's like, well, yeah, but you can see if someone's like, oh yeah, totally. I'm on my way. But you're like, "Mm, you look like you're still at your house though. Well, yeah, absolutely. And I've done that before. I've shared my location with people to let them know like where I'm at, Mm -hmm. especially if you go on a date with somebody and you want to make sure that you don't get murdered. Or if you do get murdered, then, you know, they know who did it. (laughs) You're usually the keeper of the address though. Let's be honest. You and Chevy. You and Chevy. Yeah. There's a lot of responsibility that I put on you guys that uh, (laughs) if I get murdered, you'll have to bring somebody to justice. <laughs> in accordance to Stanisowski, when they were apprehended by police, Stacy had laid there for about 20 minutes and they had checked her pulse repeatedly. She was still alive for a, quote, long, long time. And during this time, Parashamti was, quote, cleaning and cleaning and cleaning with a sponge and broom. Because her parents last knew of her being at this house, they sent police officers over to find out where she was. Good. Paris Shumpty had given a false name and said that she had seen Stacy leave days earlier. Let's be fair. They're going to find you out, you dummies. Stop it. Yeah. They came back with significant cause and found Stacy in the dumpster, face down, in the back of the shed. Mm. So obviously they took them into custody. Yeah, I mean, a body's pretty incriminating. Yeah. The officer, quote, what happened and why was the girl get killed? Parashamti, we killed her because she was really annoying and causing shit. Okay, you know, I'm just going to throw this out there into the atmos. I have encountered a lot of people in my life who are (laughs) shit starters, who are very dramatic people. And I have somehow managed at the ripe age of 28 years old to not murder a single one of them. Yeah. And I haven't at my age either. You just move on. Yeah. You just go, no, no. During the same interview, Stanislavski had said that she was a runaway and that they had known her for about a week. She also eventually confessed. She said, quote, we caved in her head and strangled her. Just very... Cavalier about yeah. the whole thing. Well, it's only it's only gonna get worse at his murder. It's gonna get worse now. I picked a bad one. I'm sorry. The escalation. After this, a detective had asked her why she had done it because they were friends, and she said, "Yeah, but she caused shit, and she wouldn't leave it. It was all her fault." Valerie was still hitting her. She wouldn't die, so I strangled her. When the person interviewing her tried to give her, let's say, a way out to humanize her. And had basically said, well, I mean, everything, you know, I mean, like everything gets worse when you're mixing alcohol with drugs. It makes you kind of do things that you wouldn't want to do. She goes, well, quote, we would have killed her anyway. She was really annoying. Are you for real? Mm -hmm. (laughs) Okay, then. So obviously they go to court. And they're tried simultaneously. The first hearing was by video chat and the judge couldn't get their names down which made them laugh a lot. It was almost, you get a substitute teacher, they can't pronounce your last name, and it's, like, hilarious. 
except for you're on trial for, for murder. murder. Yeah. And it's not so hilarious because you've killed someone. Yeah, there's literally nothing about killing a 16-year-old girl that makes this funny. They called Haynes to the stand. He was able to give his statement. In my book, he is very complicit in this. Mm -hmm. I have no sympathy for him. I agree. A psychologist that had interviewed Parashamti had said that she may or may not have borderline personality, but that it had no bearing on what she did and that she was fit to stand trial. Well, yeah, because people with borderline personality disorder, that like they don't go out and kill people like that. You don't get to just blame it on that. Yep. Judge Peter Blacksell had said the murder was, quote, sexually perverse and evil. And after the court was told that they had become sexually aroused as they were beating her up and then had kissed while standing over her body as she lay dying, he then added, quote, you have had more than a year in custody to reflect upon the evilness of your crime, yet you still lack remorse and obviously place no value in the sanctity of human life. There is also the added problem that you each enjoy being sexually aroused by the infliction of violence. Stasinowski had later said that she had wished it lasted longer. That's pure evil. That's so awful. Mm -hmm. I'm like 10 million shades of upsetty spaghetti right now. I'm sorry. They spent most of the time in court together, grinning at each other or laughing, especially when... The audio was played from the recording. It showed them mopping up the blood and pulling a blanket back from her semi-naked body. Quote, she is then abused by both offenders and they both mock her English accent. So David Haynes, the roommate who left and allowed this to happen. Yes. Was sentenced to two years jail. He is currently out on parole. Well, I hate that, but... You know, I think you should get more time than that for literally allowing a murder to happen. Mm -hmm. Apparently this wasn't the only time they tried to kill her besides the glass and obviously the concrete block. It came out in court that they also intentionally had spilled some sort of oil in the bathroom on the floor so that she would slip and hurt herself. Parashamti had accepted only limited responsibility for her participation and she minimized her involvement, which, what? You were... You were the one that was doing it. Yeah, I don't know how you minimize being the person that committed the murder, but okay. Apparently her girlfriend had tried to justify her behavior by contending that she acted from a, quote, base of fear and disassociation. Uh, okay. Yeah. Both were sentenced because of the guilty plea on willful murder and 24 years to life, but 24 years before they could even attempt parole. Okay. Which right. they, of course, tried to appeal by saying that the judge had put a really strict sentence on them. Um, the additional part of it was their lawyers had tried to contend that they were very young and they were acting rash. No, I've been young. I've been really mad. No, they were I've like not killed anyone. Like 19, right? Yeah. yeah, I knew to not murder people when I was that young. Like it was definitely in my wheelhouse to know to not murder people. It's weird how that happens. Yeah, it is really weird. It's just, I don't know, it's like a thing that you learn at a very early age. The injuries that Stacy had incurred included a fracture of the skull and strangulation. They found a swelling of the brain and a bleed on the brain. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm not surprised. A prisoner that was in jail with them, Rochelle Jane Von Ross, had come into contact with both of the two. She had given details about what they had said when they were in prison together. Jess kept repeating that she wouldn't die. Quote, the bitch wouldn't die. Sansowski kept saying it was, quote, so hot that they had to have a pash. She said they pashed over Stacy's face. She said Val was hitting her with the rock and she was choking her. They pashed over her bloodied face. Her only regret was that she wishes she spent more time on it, more gruesome stunts. She said she wishes she spent more time on it to do a better job. She wished... She had made a pash go further and the passion were sexual over the body. She said she was so sexually aroused. Their judge had noted there appeared to be no remorse or shame and that they were, quote, amused and jubilant during the entirety of the trial. They also had found a diary in the house kept by both of them. There was one separate for each where they had both expressed how happy they were about the murder and that they had described it in, quote, offensively graphic and sexualized terms. They were described as, quote, being very euphoric in tone. It was specifically said that in prison, even though they were in the same one, that they were to be kept separate. In 2009, it was revealed that they were still not only having a relationship, we're still spending seven hours a day on weekdays and several hours on the weekends together, and no one was monitoring it. When they were forced to be apart, they utilized another prisoner 
and false names to get letters to each other. That prisoner is Catherine Burney, who, with her husband, are notorious for the more.